Ian Gray is a scientist driven to prove the evolution theory and disprove the existence of God. His focus is on the human eye, which he believes holds the key to understanding humanity's origin. He goes around taking photos of people's eyes, studying their patterns and comparing them. On a Halloween night at a party, he meets a mysterious young woman who has covered her face with a veil, leaving only her eyes exposed. Ian is drawn to her unique eye pattern and takes a photo. After a night of passion, the woman disappears without a trace, leaving only her photo behind. The next day, Ian is surprised to find that he has a new assistant named Karen. While Ian initially dismisses Karen as inexperienced and incompetent, he soon discovers that she has a unique talent for observing and analyzing patterns, which complements his own scientific skills perfectly. As they work together, Ian and Karen uncover a shocking scientific discovery that has the potential to change the key we understand the origin of humanity and the role of God in our lives. Ian's research project is to make colorblind mice see color through genetic modification. Despite conducting over 350 experiments, he has yet to achieve any significant progress in his research. He has studied different eyes from the basic eye which has only one important part to human eye that has 12 important parts and compares them to see how they have mutated and evolved during centuries. The assistant that he didn't take very seriously at first starts giving him interesting ideas about starting from I0 and not I1 and building genetically an eye from scratch. Ian mentions that a non-seeing organism that can have zero eye does not have the Pax6 gene, which is a necessary gene for organism with eyes. And Karen asks how he can be so sure about that, because no one has ever checked all of these organisms to see if they don't have this gene. Ian's life takes an unexpected turn when he experiences a series of strange coincidences. On the same day he purchases goods for a total of $11.11, .11, notices his lottery ticket displaying the date of 11.11 .11 and the time of 11 hour, 11 minutes and 11 seconds, and then he boards a bus with the number 11. When he gets off the bus, he discovers a billboard featuring an advertisement for a makeup product with the image of the mysterious girl's eyes. When he gets home, he immediately looks up the company and the advertisement and finds the girl's name, Sophie, and the name and address of a cafe that she goes to. One day when he's on the subway, he sees her and follows her and they kiss. They go to a cafe and start getting to know each other. She says that when she saw him that night at the Halloween party, she felt that they had known each other from past lives. While Sophie is a spiritual person, Yian is more pragmatic and grounded in science. Sophie believes in the existence of souls and the influence of supernatural forces on human lives, but Ian remains a spectacle. Nevertheless, their relationship flourishes and Sophie tries to help Ian understand her perspective and open his mind to the possibility of a greater meaning to life. One day, Ian and Sophie decide to take their relationship to the next level and get married. However, when they arrive at the marriage office, they are informed that they must come back the next day. As they walk out, Karen calls to inform Ian that she has successfully isolated the Pax6 gene. They go to the lab. When they want to make love in the lab, Ian is accidentally blinded by some chemicals spilling onto his face. With his eyesight lost temporarily, the couple return home where they find themselves trapped in the elevator. Ian goes up and opens the elevator's doors and then tries to pull Sophie up, but the elevator's doors shut, cutting her legs, leading to her death. Eight years pass by. Ian and Karen got married and start a family. Karen is now pregnant and they are excited to welcome their baby boy Tobias into their lives. After Tobias is born, they take a picture of his eyes and upload it to the system for identification purpose. However, to their surprise, the system displays a picture of an old man whose iris pattern exactly matches Tobias's. After some time passes, Ian and Karen are contacted by a doctor who introduces herself as a researcher who is running autism research studies. She suggests that Tobias might be displaying some signs of autism and invites them to come to the lab to take some tests. During these tests, Tobias is shown several pictures, but when pictures of a farm, an old lady and a dog appear, he fixes on them and shows some reactions.
Ian and Karen become suspicious about the tests and decide to investigate further. They look up the farm on the internet and discover that it really exists. Ian then goes to the farm himself and meets the old lady and the dog. They believe that this could be evidence that Tobias' soul is the reincarnation of the man who died on the same day that Tobias was conceived. It seems that Ian is still struggling to believe in reincarnation, so his wife Karen suggests that he can look for someone who now lives and has the same iris pattern as Sophie's, as this might shed some light on the mystery surrounding this fact. After searching the relevant database, Ian and Karen manage to find the pattern of Sophie's iris registered in India. Although they do not have the name of the person, they have the name of the institution where the eyes were scanned and registered, which is the Okla Community Children's Center. Determined to find out more, Ian decides to go there and investigate further. In order to find her, he decides to use the same method by which he found Sophie. He prints her eyes and puts it on a billboard, and promises a reward for anyone who introduces him to the girl. Right at the moment that he gets disappointed and wants to go back home, he sees a little girl who is staring at the billboard. And that's her, Salomina, with the exact same eyes. He takes Salomina to his hotel room and runs some tests. He puts some photos related to Sophie, including her own image in front of her, and asks her to choose from them. The result is 40%, which is kind of random and can't prove anything. So Ian is in a way happy because this proves that reincarnation and any relation to a higher power is wrong. When they want to go out of the hotel and want to get into the elevator, Salomina panics and sticks to him. She doesn't want to go to the elevator. This is enough reason for him to believe that she is Sophie's reincarnation. At the end of the movie, we see that they join hands and get into the light. The same light that Sophie always tried to convince him to move into.